we are mumbai network of english right mumbai, mumbai network, network of, of english teachers english teachers good evening and welcome everyone dear teachers students and the speakers of the day and the speaker of the day mrs vinita nayar dear students i feel privileged to announce learn from home webinar series for a higher level english medium school organized by mnet with technical support of inet connect featuring speakers like dr manjushri sar deshpande the chairperson of the board of studies balbati pune mr nadeem khan academic coordinator of chess ra aurangabad and board of studies member balbati pune mr avinash rade board of studies member balbati pune ms renita agustin state resource person of chess ra aurangabad mrs vinita nayar she is a resource person of english new syllabus uh, she is the author of several academic and non academic textbooks uh, mrs silvia francis state resource person of chess ra aurangabad learn from home webinar series has started from 4th of august 2020 till 21st of august daily except wednesdays and sundays at 6 pm this series would uh, would provide a wonderful platform to know and understand your english activity sheet i request all our participants to be a part of the series that would guide you to deal your english activity sheet according to the state board norms and criteria and we have with us mrs vinita uh, nayar jai kumar ba ma in an in english and history she is an english and history teacher with 25 years of teaching experience she is a recipient of two awards for excellence in education she has authored several books on english grammar and creative writing apart from non academic books her article has Her articles have been published in Lok Satta, News House, and other publications. She was invited by the World Education Fellowship, an international organization, to present a paper on the role of values in education. She has been the resource person for English when the new syllabus was introduced in class nine. Ma'am will deal with question number six B, that is speech writing and view and counter view. i welcome you ma'am and i i request you to take uh, the session from here uh, hello vinita ma'am yeah i'm sharing good evening everyone i thank mumbai network english teachers for this opportunity to inter interact with so many of you students and teachers special thanks to nadeep khan sir and madam renu dotre Kanvina Mnet for providing me this platform. Students, we are going to discuss about speech writing. Speech is power. Speech is to persuade. Speech is to convert. Speech is to compel. These are the words of Rolf Waldo Emerson. So, whenever you write speech, a speech, ensure that your words are persuasive. Your ideas have the effect. to convert the other person thoughts into your own thoughts and compel them to believe in whatever you are saying you must be thinking oh my god the teacher has come and now suddenly she has started teaching she is like everyone study study okay let's take a break let us begin with a beautiful story let me share with you a beautiful uh, story many many years ago there lived a lovely little girl in a village one day walking in a jungle she came across a beautiful butterfly caught in a thorn bush the little girl slowly released the butterfly from its captivity instead of flying away the butterfly turned into a beautiful fairy for your wonderful kindness said the fairy i will grant you any wish you ask for i want to be happy said the little girl from then on there was no one in the land as happy as the fine young woman everyone asked her the secret of her happiness and all she said was i listened to a fairy when i was a little girl 
time passed by and the little girl was no longer little in fact she had become old and frail the entire village rallied around her fearing that her wonderful secret of happiness would die with her finally after much cajoling the lovely old woman smiled and said the fairy told me that if i did all i did with creativity and hard work persistence and commitment and loved and enjoyed whatever i did i would be happy she added that i should aim for perfection in all i do now as the lovely old lady looks around she finds only happy villages all around because they had all applied this maxim in their lives and she wished she had shared the she had not kept the secret with her for this long so let us follow the lovely lady's advice and pledge to strive for perfection by loving what we do and doing what we love this is applicable in creative writing too let us be creative and innovative in our spoken and written expressions i hope all of you loved this story and uh, the story has a message for us and that is you have to enjoy what you are doing you have to really do it with all your heart there is there are no uh, you know uh, shortcuts to success and do the best you can until you know better and then when you know better do better that should be your maxim in life now let us get started now what is creative writing now remember creative writing is i'll just uh, shift this creative writing is a form of writing wherein creativity is brought to the forefront using our power of imagination by unleashing our creativity and by being innovative in our expression of ideas out of the box ideas have you heard people saying so it is very important you know to unleash our creativity using imagery and other linguistic devices like figures of speech in our writing we can create impactful and creative work in the form of prose poem stories and other creative composition and remember all of us have innate creativity in us all that is required is to tap into that innate creativity and bring it to the fore and that will come only with practice that will come only with a lot of effort children there is no shortcuts to success and especially in creative writing you have to go on reading and go on writing now the, the secret of getting ahead is getting started very often what happens is you know when we see a question we get overwhelmed we are like no i won't be able to do that of course you will be able to do this first and foremost you have to understand the topic this i'm talking about the practice level very important you understand the topic in hand i still remember many years back you know in the hsc exam they had uh, included a topic in the paper which said we should all plant some trees we will never sit under many of them had written you know about uh, afforestation it was not about that the topic was about doing selfless service to others which may or may not be beneficial to us unfortunately they didn't get the topic so understanding the topic is extremely extremely important once you have the topic enlist all the ideas what am i going to include in my essay then connect your ideas in a logical sequence organize them eventually get down to writing evaluate yourself self evaluation is very important when you evaluate yourself you will know how good it is how bad it is or how exemplary it is it all you know self evaluate our heart will tell us yes this is something beautiful that i have composed and then eventually you will get the final product please make sure that you show it to your teachers and get it assessed it is very very important just writing and keeping will not help assessment is extremely extremely important as i told you speech writing is an art of conveying the message to your audience the reason for writing are to inform to explain and to persuade somebody and if you succeed in doing this yes you will get 4 uh, out of 5 introduction carries one mark completeness of the language used completeness and the language used you will get two marks logical sequence one mark grammar and vocabulary another one mark so you have to read a lot of model essays you have to revise the fundamentals of grammar even for writing skills only then will you excel in this area now remember children when we talk about speech writing there are different speeches for different occasions 
there are political speeches uh, on 15th of august uh, honorable prime minister of india narendra modi ji gave us a political speech yes political speeches are given by leaders and politicians when your teacher gives you a speech that is a school speech then when you give uh, you take part in elocution the speech that you are giving is another kind of speech then on the spot speeches ex tempore then when somebody does well in the exam we felicitate him and then there is a speech which is given then introduction of any event and achievement chief guest this is 10th standard you will have to be due to your school so when you leave there will be a farewell function the speech that you will give there that will be valedictory speech then there are closing speeches like vote of thanks now remember there are no good or bad speech there is only a speech which comes from dil se a speech which comes from within your thoughts your attitude your personality your ability to reach out your emotions the meeting point of all that is an exemplary speech so now looking at the kind of speech children you have to decide the tone so what will what is the tone swaraj is my birthright and i shall have it when this this is an assertive tone swaraj is my birthright may i have it this is not an assertive tone so the tone depends upon what we are putting across what we are trying to convey so the tone will show your attitude all right and similar to the tone of your voice the tone in your writing conveys whether you are positive about the topic negative about the topic or you just don't care about the topic neutral about the topic so the tone is extremely important now at the pre writing stage what is pre writing stage to begin with before you start writing you cannot when you are practicing you cannot just get started and say oh my god now i am going to write this essay no calm down take a uh, take a break pause a little what will you do first you will be first well acquainted with the topic you will read a lot of uh, similar essays you will make a list of vocabulary you know which you can use in that particular essay suppose if it is on environment you will have a list of words like conservation preservation protection afforestation soil erosion depletion of ozone layer a list of words you will prepare and you will try to include these words because it is so relevant to the topic apart from that you should have thorough knowledge of the topic now what is depletion of ozone layer if you don't know sorry you won't be able to write the essay so read research and develop your organizational skills organizing your ideas are very very important and master the art of summarizing cutting the long story short is not an easy task my friend but that there lies the beauty you keeping it short keeping it simple extremely extremely important i'll keep on reminding you her word limit is just 100 words don't cross that limit now here is the format or the tips that will help you to write a perfect speech a perfect speech must consist of title now i'll tell you uh, this time uh, when we were doing a particular writing skill topic many of them were not able to do it properly so we were told that that there is a title something they have written so give some marks to the title so remember title is very very important if there is no title how will i know what are you talking about suppose a speech has to be delivered on the occasion of birth anniversary of lokmanya bal gangadhar tilak you have to write that on top a speech to be delivered on the occasion of the birth anniversary of lokmanya bal gangadhar tilak then you will get remember i b c if i you were in front of me i would ask you what does it stand for i stands for introduction b for body c for conclusion so in the opening line the introduction salutation introduction and the topic please do not mention your personal details like your name name of your school etc in the exam in the board exam we are supposed to keep all these we are not supposed to reveal any of these details so that would be your opening line so here is an example respected guest principal deputy headmistress supervisor special invitees parents teachers and my dear friends a learned scholar and writer a lawyer and educationist a social reformer and a mathematician a philosopher and the torch bearer of independent journalism the integral part of the lal bal pal triumvirate 
the father of the Indian unrest, who exemplified the true meaning of patriotism. Yes, I'm talking about Lokmanya Balagangadhar Tilak, the father of the Indian unrest. It is my honor and priv privilege to pay tribute to the great leader, Lokmanya Balagangadhar Tilak, on his birth anniversary. And you can just get started from here. So this would be a beautiful introduction where you have covered so many aspects of this great leader's personality. And then you are just introducing yourself. You have addressed everyone in the audience. A good way to get started. Now we come to, we actually get down to business. Getting down to business. It is about, you know, if it is about any social or environmental issue, make the purpose of the speech extremely clear. Define the problem. What are the causes? What are the consequences? Suggest corrective actions, solutions and agencies and organizations which can help. If the topic is about viewpoint uh, on some existing topic, enlist advantages, disadvantages. If it is a problem like population explosion, define the problem. What is population explosion? What are the causes of population explosion? Illiteracy, blind belief, so many things. What are the consequences? Poverty, unemployment, illiteracy, low standard of living, the list is long. What is the solution? Education is the most powerful instrument of change. Let us educate the people about the need to have small family, happy family. So there has to be a logical uh, you know, flow in your writing. The problems are stated, you know, the causes, then the consequences, then how to get out of the whole mess. Everything you have to suggest, your writing has to be complete. I should not be left wondering, Abhi main kya karu? you have said all this. So now, no, it has to be complete in every sense. You have to strictly follow the prescribed word limit of 100 words and complete the paper in a limited time frame. What happens is we get carried away, very easy topic. I will go on and on and on and on, calm down. If you exceed word limit also, you will not get good marks. So don't get carried away. Practice is very important. Practice is extremely important. And here the art of summary writing is also very, very important. How to summarize everything. And let there be an anecdote, quotations, stories, illustrations, examples, statistics. You know, all this add substance to your writing. Now, when you read the lesson, let's march. I've read that lesson a hundred times, you know, just for the choice of words, that story there, that anecdote, that statistics. And, you know, so many, uh, so much of research has gone into writing that speech, that, you know, peace acceptance, uh, Nobel Peace Prize acceptance uh, speech of Kaila Satyarthi. Amazing thought from an amazing man. You must read such speeches because they inspire you to write well. They inspire you to express well. Apart from all the values it imparts, my takeaway was how to write a good speech. We In my school, we, dis we discussed the lesson and I taught them speech writing. Then we discussed uh, this lesson. Again, we went back to speech writing to see that he had done everything which we had discussed. And very, very important is don't deviate from the topic in hand. So uh, in my class, uh, we had this uh, speech uh, practice and we had to talk about self-reliance. And suddenly the student got carried away and he started talking about China. Not required. Control your emotions. What is the topic? Let us stick to that. So very often what happens is when we write, you know, we get overwhelmed. We know so much. So everything comes into our writing. Calm down. Don't deviate from the topic in hand. Keep the topic in front of you. If you're writing about, uh, you know, uh, Lokmanya Tilak, the torchbearer of independent journalism, you will not write about his childhood. You will not write about his uh, honesty. You will not write about his educational institutions. Your, your uh, speech will concentrate, should concentrate more on what he did for ensuring that journalism became a tool during India's freedom struggle. That focus should not be lost. That is extremely important. It happens very often. We get carried away. That should not happen. And in conclusion, remember to sum up all your points and include a quote for an effective closure and always end on a positive note. Very, very important. But why teacher, why end on a positive note? I want to be negative. Child, we have so much of pessimism all around, so many pessimists all around. Let us be positive. 
let us be happy so let us end on a positive note you may ask rhetorical questions uh, example you know if suppose i am giving a speech on these challenging times i could end my speech like this come let us take a break wondering about the challenging times which lie ahead let us make the most of this moment isn't everything else transient isn't everything else temporary come let us take a break from self doubt yes we have it in us the ability to rise above these challenging times let us remember coming together is beginning keeping together is progress working together is success so i have asked rhetorical question and i have uh, ended on a positive note i have ended with a quote all without exceeding word limit and in the concluding line thank the audience for their cooperation and of course for giving me a patient hearing very important because uh, when you actually give a speech you are as good as your audience the more encouraging they are the more appreciative they are you know the best comes out of it all right so again to sum up whatever we have uh, discussed always address the audience and dignitaries before you start the speech you may start with a generalized view on the topic and go down to particular use a lot of illustrations evidences quotes statistics and other details you may even start with an example and after a series of illustration generalize on the topic you may compare and contrast with similar concepts to add depth to your speech when you are talking about the population in india compare it with australia there the population is sparse so what are the advantages try to bring in that add substance to your writing it's all about packaging you know it's very important before your speech please brainstorm to explain what is brainstorm brainstorming is allowing all the ideas to come to you as you are thinking and once the ideas come to you what you will do is you will organize them in a proper sequence and put it across as a beautiful speech and uh, if the speech is on an event which has already taken place the chronology matters arrange it in chronological order the way it has occurred okay the good introduction and conclusion will make a good speech a better one and the better speech the best because you know the first and the last impression extremely important it, now in 5 five, 5 five minutes you must have judged me oh this one is going to deliver or this one is not going to deliver so that is very important how you catch the attention of your audience and make them glued to that you know glued to their seat or their uh, screen very important nowadays screen <laughs> a dash of humor will make your speech memorable you know uh, but you should not crack weird jokes it has to be relevant to the context and a little bit of conversational style i was telling my students also conversational style does not make does not mean colloquial style colloquial is how we talk on a daily basis hey how are you what's up Th that we will not allow in our speech but at the same time there can be a lot of questions asked and we can try to make it conversational so here is a diagrammatic representation of all that i said so far prepare an outline have a great opening a beautiful introduction come up with a beautiful quote include maximum uh, you know information and examples in the body of the essay that is extremely important and in the key po conclusion if you can't think of anything at least summarize all the key points that you have added and as i told you proverbs quotations anecdotes statistics illustrations uh, examples all that can be added for a better poetic effect for a better impact you know and your your writing whether it is prose or poetry it should flow like a poem you know it should be a uh, poetry in motion that is very very important and most important revise review then submit we are always in a hurry are to three hour paper i finished in two hours who will revise the paper please start revising the paper because in our hurry sometimes you know our thoughts are uh, having one speed the writing is at some other level so what happens is knowingly or unknowingly we make mistakes even the best students make mistakes okay so it is very very important for us to revise our work before we submit it extremely important now uh, the most beautiful speech that i have come across in my life is uh, this speech which i keep reading all the time it fills me with uh, you know pride 
of being an indian we are not going to i want you to go and listen to the whole speech uh, on the youtube later long years ago we had made a tryst with destiny now the time has come i can't see the whole screen i'll just adjust this when we shall redeem our pledge not wholly or in full measure but very substantially at the stroke of the midnight hour when the world sleeps india will awake to life and freedom a moment comes which comes but rarely in history when we step out from the old to the new when an age ends and when the soul of a nation long suppressed finds utterance it is fitting that at this solemn moment we take the pledge of dedication to the service of india and her people and to the still larger cause of humanity look at the choice of words look at that patriotism look at the pride look at into you know, the vision for the future i have just read two paragraphs of the whole speech and this is what you know the right choice of words can do to your ideas your expressions okay the entire uh, struggle and the journey ahead has been encapsulated in this uh, two paragraphs so remember this is the power of words never underestimate the power of words and that will come only with practice only with practice keep practicing please and the whole speech as i told you you must go and read very important now uh, we were talking about a speech to be delivered on world environment day remember there will be some questions related to the environment definitely so you will start with observed every year on 5th june it is an initiative by the united nation to raise awareness about the environmental problems and the need to conserve preserve and protect the environment the environmental problems in the form of deforestation soil erosion pollution extinction of animals depletion of ozone layer etc are on a rise on this day we should pledge to become selfless and become more responsible towards the environment we are a part of in the first paragraph itself everything is clear the purpose of the speech who started it why this day uh, is observed what are the different environmental problems and what we should do to ensure that these problems are tackled so what can be done is there in the next paragraph tree plantation drive cleanliness drive creating awareness regarding the ill effects of pollution etc a few simple steps we can take to stop environmental deterioration it is high time we take responsibility for our action and take charge of the environment simple lines but be effective and be correct uh, then you can go on talking about uh, ill effects of pollution uh, then uh, you know we have to understand then uh, the nature is giving us warning regarding natural balance which is upset due to our thoughtless action how we should sustain the beauties and bounties of nature you can quote gandhi ji here gandhi ji has rightly said there is enough in this world for everyone's need but not for everyone's greed as responsible world citizens let us resolve to work towards a greener world a healthy environment the future lies in our responsible actions let us remember we have not inherited this planet from our ancestors but borrowed it from our future generations thought provoking thoughts you know what we go on beating around the bush one quote or one proverb can encapsulate all these emotions let us handle it with care thank you so always remember to write thank you the opening line etc okay so now you can uh, for practice you may write this down prepare a speech to be delivered by you on republic day suppose so why is it celebrated how to develop patriotism why is it important to follow rules and regulations and uh, abide by our constitution how to act with a sense of responsibilities how to carry out our duties little things you know and you can develop a beautiful essay on so here the tone will be all patriotic you know when you write about republic day come let us walk on the path of progress and prosperity come let us take our nation to greater heights of glory together we can and we will make a difference it will be you know filled with patriotism love for our motherland while you talk about your mother it will be all you know mushy and all love for your mother why is it celebrated the love the care the concern she displays 
So in your words, all the love for your mother has to be, you know, reflected. How she is a pillar of strength, the sacrifices she makes. When you write about that, you know, there should be a flow of gratitude from your heart. And how she is a friend, a philosopher, a guide. All that I am and hope to be is because of my mother, my inspiration. I am because my mother is. Such beautiful words. You can use all this. The only difference between the two homework which I am giving you, one will be in the tone of patriotism. The other, love, affection, gratitude. So you have to tell yourself, I have to write this speech with this tone. I have to write this speech with this tone. So you know, when you train yourself like that, na, it becomes easy. So yeah, when you are doing your homework, I will again take you through what I want you to do. Be extremely, extremely clear about the topic you are writing on. Have a clear message for the readers. Okay, the writing should be clear, loud and clear. They say, it's, is it loud and clear? It has to be loud and clear. There should be no room for confusion, and it has to be concise. Keep it short and simple as i told you and remember i repeat the word limit is 100 words i'm tired reading essays of 250 words we are giving you only five marks so write only limited to 100 words and keep it interesting see i will be reading in the board exam if i get to correct papers i'll be reading around 250 300 papers the same thing again and again again and again i'll feel bored so make it interesting you know uh, i told you what you can do stories examples quotations jokes statistics it has to be you know educative and enrich enriching entertaining and interesting also there has to be a lot of takeaways from the speech all right i was telling my students you know 25 years back we in our school had this inauguration of nature club and there was this beautiful story of you know a little boy throwing starfish back into the sea and this story was narrated by our then principal and I still remember that particular speech which she gave. But the only thing I remember in that uh, speech is that each one of us should do our bit. I remember the story. So, you know, uh, it is very important to leave an impact. When, I, when you think of me 25 years from now, you should remember something I told you. That is very important. That is the way you make an impact. For that, these stories, examples, quotations, jokes, all these things will come handy. And uh, apart from that, there can be a slight informal touch. Uh, though it is formal, it can be you know, presented in a formal or uh, uh, you know, less, in, uh, less formal manner. A dash of you know, uh, informal touch will do wonders to your speech. Why? Because they will be able to relate with what you're talking. Otherwise, you know, if it is prim and proper, sometimes we don't relate to the speaker. So a little informal touch might help. And free from excessive display of emotions. There has to be the right dash. What happens if we put too much salt into a dish? Not possible to consume it. Similarly, if there is a, too much of a display of emotions, 10 o'clock news, have you listened? I don't because it gives me a headache. Too much of display of emotion. Calm down. Calm down. One at a time. So it is very important that, you know, uh, we have to be unbiased and unemotional. Our emotions may drive us away from the main theme. That is the main reason. We might get carried away. Okay. So that should not happen. So we have to just stay calm and make sure that we go with the flow and don't lose our composure, even while writing and even if you are giving a speech. Okay. And Dale uh, Carnegie has rightly said there are always three for everyone. You actually gave the one you practiced, the one you gave and the one you wish you gave. It means that you know what we think, what we plan, and final output is totally different. Don't worry about that. As long as you have delivered, you have done your best, you don't have to worry about the outcome. And remember children, all these things, including the mark breakup I told you, was not because I want you to get 95 in English or 90 in English or 89, which we usually get, not for that. It is, these are all life skills. Remember, when you look around, so many people, people are unhappy you know so many people are like oh my god lockdown i'm not able to go out and i'm stressed and i'm depressed you know who are the happiest people the happiest people are the creative people the doers okay there are people in the lockdown 
sitting and writing poems there are people who are painting pictures there are people who are making best out of waste so if you have your creativity tapped and it has already come out you have something to remain occupied you are not going to school school hours have been reduced you are bored right the best way to give vent to your uh, creativity and also a way out of your boredom is to write creatively write poems write the scripts so many things you can write and just write down write down what you are feeling maintain a diary because writing is something which is a gift and very underused gift all of us have it with us why don't we start writing please you must try it now we come to view and counter view all right and i will be just touching and going i'm not going to elaborate on this much uh, because Vinita, of the paucity of time yeah anita ma'am there's one question yes, uh, they have asked yeah. what is anecdote and how many paragraph they are supposed to use yeah. in a yeah anecdote yeah anecdote let me illustrate with the help of an example from let's march uh here uh, kailash satyarthi is narrating an incident when he goes to school he finds a little boy sitting outside you know a cobbler and doing the work and he uh, then talks about you know asking several people about why he is not in the classroom and why is he outside now this is an anecdote a small incident from your life and so any small incident which you narrate to drive a point is an anecdote what i narrated about what happened in my class when i was talking to you that is also an anecdote i hope i am clear i know talking about how many paragraphs always remember when in doubt i b c minimum 3 paragraphs introduction body and conclusion and for 100 marks i think 3 paragraphs should be good enough all right unless and until like in view counter view they say write a paragraph despite stating write a paragraph many of us end up writing three to four paragraphs no read the question well what does the question say R write a paragraph a means one so it depends so now as far as speech is concerned you may go ahead with i b c introduction body and conclusion three paragraphs and what is right. rhetorical question that... rhetorical ah, question rhetorical and yeah. are they supposed to begin with rhetorical questions uh, you may begin with a rhetorical question what is the world coming to i am not expecting anyone from the audience and uh, uh, you know say that the world is coming very close to getting a vaccine for corona no rhetorical questions are those questions which are asked not for the sake of getting an answer but for better emphasis to make my uh, statement more impactful will this uh, situation ever improve <coughs> i know the answer but when i am asking that que rhetorical question i am asking you to think about it so rhetorical questions are those questions which are asked to ask a better impact not for the sake of getting an answer it is similar to figure of speech interrogation the question is asked not for the sake of getting an answer but for a better poetic effect what was the other question madam no ma'am all these questions were there for speech now you can continue with view and counter yeah how many minutes do we have now for this we session we have we have uh, 15 minutes all right okay so view and counter view now all of us have a view point you open any news channel any tom dick harry everybody has a view point about why that happened why the prime minister should have spoken this way why that happened that way why is the vaccine why, you know vaccine not ready everybody has a view and then others have counter view and what happens is conflict but not in our english paper in our english paper we learn in a beautiful way how both the view points go can go hand in hand all right so view point remember is a way of regarding a subject okay when you uh, look at a half full glass you might feel oh it is half empty and i might feel oh my god that glass is half full view point differs from person to person all right so that one person has a view the other has a counter view and because we are human beings we are allowed to have views and counter views and being a democratic nation we have to be tolerant about views and counter views all right so when we are provided a view and asked to give a counter view you have to first and foremost read the view 
and get a better understanding of the view. Very often you may not, you may agree with the view also. Ah, barabar hai, this is correct. But for marks, you have to write counter view. So you have to imagine that you don't agree with all this. And then you have to get started. Think, analyze and conclude how your views differ from the one stated. So what I have told my students is, students, if you strongly feel about the view which is given, go for speech. Because don't go against your beliefs and, you know, try to do something, uh, write something which you are not convinced about. In life, we should do only things which you are sure of. That's what I believe in. That's what I teach my students too. So if you're not convinced, forget it. Think, analyze and conclude if your views differ. Then organize your viewpoint, which is against the one given. Clarify doubts. Express your opinion. And again, we come back to the good old illustrations, statistics and proofs and what have you. Whenever you talk, you should not talk in air. There has to be some proof about what you're saying. There has to be some uh, proof to fall back on. You cannot just make a statement. So it is very, very important that when you are attempting counter review, you are ready with your, your facts. Unfortunately, some of us are not. So it is, and remember, view and counter view is not like the sentence is given, you take that and you make it negative. No, that is not view counter view. And second, you're not supposed to write in points, students. You're supposed to write your counter view in a paragraph. This is a common mistake that you all make. So please be very careful about that. And uh, when you're trained, you know, I want your teachers to uh, help you to express your point of view, which is against the one given in a clear manner. In school, you must have participated in debate. And you know, one person talks and then you attack that person's view without getting argumentative. And put, you have to put your argument across. And please keep emphasizing on the key points that you wish to convey. Then you conclude your arguments and reiterate that, you know, you don't agree with the view that you have expressed. Again, revising, reviewing and submitting is very important. Another mistake that we often do in view counter view is that we uh, end up writing view only. Sometimes the other mistake that we do is we mix up our views and our counter views. Are you, take a stand. First, look at the view. I have to talk against this. So what are my points against this? Analyze that first in my mind and then get down to writing. Don't be in a hurry. This question, five minutes of thinking is very, very essential. Five minutes you allot for thinking about this question and then attacking the answer. Very careful because it can go wrong. Even with bright students I have seen, instead of uh, writing counter view, they also write their view. Not done. All right. And again, introduction and conclusion, you will get one mark. Uh, use of vocabulary and grammar. Another one mark. Language used and lo logical sequence, two marks. Confidence and assertiveness in your opinion. Are you sure about what you're saying? See, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you in an authoritarian tone. Why? Because I have been there, I've done that. I know what it is. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that will come only when you're well read. So you have to be very assertive when you're giving, when you're attacking somebody else's views. That's very, very important. Yeah. All right. So now uh, this was a question which was asked several years back. Are coaching classes an answer to the present education system? So I have prepared view and counter view just to show you how, you know, th this is actually a competition also people organize. Turn coat. You speak at once about, uh, uh, positive about that topic. And in the next breath, you talk negative about the topic. That is called turn coat. Uh, this is uh, in the exam, you will be given view. You have to write only the counter view or vice versa. So uh, if suppose uh, you have to write a view on tuition classes are an answer to the present educational system. If the statement is given, then you will have to start with counter view. Education is not about marks. It is what a fine individual you are at the end of the educational process. The values of self-reliance, concentration and hard work will be instilled in us if we do our work on our own. Teachers do their best in the school and are available even after class hours. They are experienced and qualified and ever willing to give their best. If we concentrate in school, we need not go through the same lesson again in tuition classes. Preparing our own notes 
will not only make our learning permanent, but equip us with skills to embark on a path of lifelong learning. The finest inheritance the society can give us is help us find our own way completely on our own feet. So this is, I'm saying, please, no, no, no coaching class. But suppose the uh, view given is that coaching classes, you know, uh, uh, should be banned. Suppose we are, we are saying co coaching classes should be banned. So I should talk in favor of coaching class. So you will say immediately, tuition classes are an answer to the mark-oriented educational system today. Sad but true. With high cutoff declared by colleges each year, every mark counts. The overcrowded classroom and never-ending curriculum acts as a barrier between the student and the school teacher. This lack of one-to-one -one interaction may not help the child to perform to his potential. Expert who tutor, the ready-made notes, PowerPoint presentations, which they present, make learn perm learning permanent and lasting. Tuition classes are a boon to excel in academics. So you see how it works? So you have to write against the topic which is given. So it is very, very important to understand that we have to first look at it. We may or may not agree with what is stated, but we have to talk against the view which is given. It will again come with a lot of practice. You can quickly write down some topics for practice. Mothers should not go to work. Why not? Of course, they should go to work. They, if they don't go to work, how will our nation progress? All these points you can start writing and say that, you know, mothers should work. Then a social networking site is not a necessity. So you will say, of course, it is a necessity. It connects people. And then you will go on writing one paragraph about the same. Globalization is expediting progress. No, you don't agree. Isn't it the new day imperialism? Then you will go on talking about how the rich nations are becoming richer and richer, poor nations are becoming poorer and poorer, and how nothing has changed. Privatization helps in industrial development. No, you don't agree. You will say it should be the ownership should be on the government. Public sector should come to the fore, and then go on talking about that. Sports should be made compulsory in education. You will say, uh, if you don't, you don't have to agree here, right? And you will say, no, each one of us are born with our innate capacities, capabilities, and abilities. So if sports is not our area of expertise, it should not be made compulsory. Due to health reasons, some of us cannot participate in sports, et cetera, et cetera. So remember, whenever topics are given, what you will do, you will enlist the, to the points which you can use against the opinion which is given, the view which is given, and then form your counter view. But remember, read the question clearly. If they say a paragraph, stick to a paragraph. If they say paragraphs, then have more paragraphs. So yeah, good, better, best should never let us rest till we make our good better and better best. And this is so relevant in creative writing. No, it comes with a lot of practice. You cannot become an uh, you know overnight success in writing or in creative expression. But it usually comes with a lot of reading. Don't underestimate the power of reading, especially newspapers, because we were literally you know our generation was literally brought up on that uh, Times of India. We used to read it from every line. We used to lap up every written word. Newspapers, magazines, Reader's Digest. At that time, it was very popular. And all this has contributed to our ability to communicate with ease, with effectiveness, with style and elan, write in a very uh, different manner. Okay, choice of words we learn when we read. So you, uh, if you're good, better, don't rest. Good, better, best should never let you rest. Why? Because excellence is a moving target. You have to constantly raise the bar of your performance. You have to keep improving. And remember, there is no, you cannot say now I have become a perfectionist. I am the best. No, there is still room for improvement. So keep reading, keep writing, keep exploring. And most importantly, get it assessed from your teachers. Now, of course, distance divides you. You cannot uh, go to school and meet the teachers. But at least, you know, uh, uh, one of the essays, you can ask the teacher to check it for you. You can ask your parents to go through your work. You can collaborate with friends and, you know, have a discussion. And at the end of the day, it is how well read you are. You know, you cannot 
rise above uh, your the, above the books that you have read your success i personally believe is you know proportionate to the amount of books you have read because tomorrow if, even when you become a doctor engineer astronaut please i want you all to become all of this and a poet too let that you know that creativity be alive in you all the time i have a student uh, who is uh, doing her engineering from iit and every week on uh, facebook messenger i get one of her poems she says teacher sometimes this academic uh, course gets so uh, overwhelming that i start writing poems i'm so glad she has kept her creative side alive i want you to do the same it was wonderful interacting with you now i am open to questions any questions please ask students <clears throat> do you all have any questions because there are hardly any questions on the youtube channel what is the word limit while writing a view or a counter view that's a question that has come around uh, 50 to 60 words would be good enough depending upon the points they have given suppose six points are given i would advise you to write at least three sentences against each point so if uh, so around 18 points 18 to 20 sentences would be good enough okay, any other is, no that is the only question that i have got all right and they had there is one question from the youtube that uh, it is given that write a counter view they are saying that only a counter view is asked and write a counter view with the, seeing the points in the view huh. so what does that mean so uh, in uh, when they give a view tuition classes are an answer uh, to the that example which i showed you they will give you a few points which they support so th using those points take each point and attack that point and give your thoughts against that point and make a paragraph of all the points that you don't agree with and make sure that you attack each and every point don't leave out a single point unanswered that is very important anything else Ma'am, what does statics mean? Statistics, statistics. Yeah, he has written only statics. Okay, statistics. I said you include statistics in your essay. Suppose you are talking about population explosion. What was the population uh, in India twenty years back? What is it today? How is the number rising? Statistics is all about numbers. So give the proper statistics. In marching ahead, uh, Kaila Satyarthi has given about the as the number. of people who are affected the number of children who are affected when you read those statistics you really you realize the magnitude of the problem faced by children so statistics add substance to whatever you write anything else what is the time limit for speech writing time limit see again we will vary from person to person but you can uh, thinking and writing together you can allow around 10 minutes little less than 10 minutes okay yeah okay so yeah one point one teacher has said that uh, she said that uh, at the training in pune they were told only views would be asked and the counter views would views will would be given so yeah that is, so what, that is what i told the students so you have to prepare yourself for view and counter view if the counter view is given you have to prepare for view also at your practice level so that when a view is given it is very easy for you to write the other side of the coin remember every coin has two sides okay the positive and the negative so one side will be given to you you have to negate whatever is given okay so you have to counter view you have to counter attack anything okay else? Uh, can uh, uh, can i drop one point suppose some points are given ha huh. and they have to attack the points can they drop any one point while writing the other side the other counter view i would advise you against it and i would ask advise you to start preparing right away on you know all these uh, debatable points uh, because if you leave one point that means your uh, argument is incomplete that means you are giving them that benefit that yes this point is correct don't give them that chance write something that you know about that point also or you can just say that i don't agree with this point too if you have nothing else to say just camouflage it anything else uh yeah we i yeah and others are saying yeah it was an excellent um, lesson thank you so much thank you and really it was an excellent lesson thank especially so taking two topics at one time yeah <laughs>
I would have loved to go on and on about speech and read the entire speech of uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, but time constraints. But I request all of you, as soon as uh, you log out of this, please go and listen to that speech. Amazing it is. And read uh, Marching Ahead once again, please. Because you will understand everything that I told you when you read that uh, speech written by Kailash Satyarthi. And, and even some students asking, what are the common topics that they should prepare for uh, the board exam? The common topics. For the board exam, uh, for the board exam, as I told you, for view counter view, mother should not go to work, social networking site, environment issues. Remember, if you look at last five years or 10 years paper, there's always something asked about environment. So prepare a lot on environmental issues, your role, uh, you know, towards the environment. What are the environmental problems that we are facing? How can these environmental issues be, uh, you know, tackled? Uh, what is the role of education in tackling these uh, issues? What are the, what, how can NGOs, non-governmental organizations help, you know, uh, tackle these environmental problems? Prepare a lot of topics on environment because I have seen in the paper something about the environment is there. If not anything, personal response questions will be asked regarding environment. Then you can prepare about globalization. What I do, you know, when we do something in history, I tell my students to do something in English from that history. Suppose uh, if they're reading about globalization, I will say, okay, now you write uh, how globalization is expediating progress or not expediating progress. So always remember knowledge is whole. Whichever subject you're studying, now try to integrate it with English. Defense, there are so many uh, you know, tree diagrams given. So try to do that. The tree diagram, take the tree diagram from your defense workbook and start writing a paragraph on that. There are so many ways to develop our writing skill. Just Explore the possibilities. It's unlimited. And please, all of you, please become writers. Please. There is joy. Man, myself is a writer. No, there is joy. You know, you find solace when you are writing. So I want you all to explore that possibility. Love you all. Thank you so much for your so cooperation. One of the students is saying, thank you, ma'am. You have breath fire in us. Fire. Oh, so <laughs> sweet. That's such a huge compliment. Love you so much. Yeah, they, thank they you. Saying it was a wonderful session. So I will call Aditi. Aditi Shah to propose a vote of thanks to this wonderful lady. So sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Aditi, you are there? Aditi? Yeah. Hi. Good evening, everyone. On the behalf of MNET, I would like to thank Mrs. Vinita Nair for volunteering her time and providing us with such a knowledgeable explanation on the topic of scene passages. The topic explained by her is definitely going to be of immense help for all the students. I would also like to appreciate the constant efforts of Mr. Nadeem Khan for providing the necessary technical support to MNET. Many thanks to the host and convener, Mrs. Renu Dhotre for organizing this extremely insightful learn from home webinar series for the students of higher level English high schools through the platform of MNET. These workshops have enabled the students to learn English language through online platform. I would also like to extend our thanks to the participants from various countries for effectively participating in the various MNET workshops held till date. We at MNET appreciate the positive feedback obtained from all the participants and look forward to such enthusiasm from them in the future as well. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, Aditi. And thank you, uh, Vinita ma'am. Uh, Vinita ma'am herself is a thank very you. enthusiastic uh, personality. Uh, and she has written so many books and I'm a fan of uh, her work. So thank you, Vinita ma'am. Thank you, dear students. Thank you so for, much, ma'am, for this honor. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just end the session. Thank you so much.